Docteur Naledi Pandor, de l'Afrique du Sud. Très captivant, très fort. Comme vous le savez, euh, les Palestiniens vivant à Gaza n'ont pas de quoi. Okay ils n'ont pas à manger, ils n'ont pas de nourriture, ils n'ont pas de ressources de santé. Ils sont en difficulté. Alors, euh, en tant qu'humain, évidemment, réfléchissant, il est essentiel de porter de l'aide à des civils qui n'ont absolument peut-être rien à voir avec ce qui s'est passé, qui ne sont pas nécessairement auteurs des tragédies qui sont passées en Israël. Alors, on va suivre aussi maintenant Lady Pondor dans son discours. Elle s'est exprimée, elle a exprimé son, son inquiétude par rapport à la situation. Les Palestiniens ont besoin d'aide, en tout cas les Palestiniens qui n'ont rien fait, qui n'ont pas de difficultés, qui ne sont pas allés euh, faire tout ça là. Ils ont besoin de manger, ils ont besoin de tout ça. Lady Pondor s'exprime, suivant. We will focus today on our international work and really look at four uh, key areas. I think we should have added a fifth, uh, but I'll, I will speak to it briefly. The first is uh, to report on the recent summits of the Non-Aligned Movement and the G77 plus China. Uh, these meetings were held just a week and a half ago in Uganda. And then second, to speak to the case Uh, that is before the International Court of Justice involving our assertion that Israel uh, is uh, uh, committing genocide in the uh, war on uh, Gaza. The third is to reflect on the upcom upcoming African Union a summit which will be held uh, in February in the next few uh, uh, weeks, in the week or so. And then the fourth is to speak briefly to our handing over of the chair of BRICS to the uh, Russian uh, Federation. And then fifthly, what we haven't dealt with here, but which I must mention, is to also say in our work this year, we shall be anticipating our assumption of the chair of G20 for 2025. We're working on the early aspects of that responsibility, but I think it is important that we make reference to it because it's really uh, going to form a large part of the work that we will initiate but which will be concluded by the next administration. So first, on the recent uh, summits of NAM and G77 and China, uh, the summits uh, took place uh, in Kampala, Uganda from the 19th to the 22nd of January. The uh, Non-Aligned Movement Summit identified five priority areas for focus. These were regional and international peace and security, the fight against terrorism, the issues of migration and humanitarian crises associated with this, as well as the issue of security in migration, um, as well as human trafficking, And uh, our progress as the non-aligned movement countries in uh, implementation of the sustainable development uh, goals. In uh, our South African statement to the non-aligned movement presented by uh, President Ramaphosa, the president confirmed that South Africa will remain steadfast in advancing its non-aligned approach to the maintenance of international peace and security by advocating always for the peaceful political settlement of disputes and for inclusive dialogue between countries in conflict. The non-aligned movement also had uh, the great excitement of welcoming its first new member in 13 years, and that was the Republic of South Sudan, which now brings the total membership of NAM to 121 state parties. Following the Non-Aligned Movement meeting, I led the South African delegation to the G77 and China Summit, which was held under the theme, Leaving No One uh, Behind. The G77 and China uh, group is also known as the South Summit. It is the largest negotiating bloc in the United Nations body, representing most developing countries and over 80% of the world's population. The focus on the summit was on enhancing South-South cooperation 
in the areas of trade, investment, sustainable development, responses to climate change, poverty er eradication measures, and uh, fully uh, extracting opportunity from the digital economy. We had a really excellent uh, summit with uh, uh, very good outcomes from both the NAM deliberations as well as the G77 uh, uh, and, and China. China. And, I and I think we remain as a fairly uh, a well uh, united uh, body of countries that share perspectives that are common on a number of issues, uh, but there are areas of difference, but I think what is really uh, noteworthy is that we are able to robustly uh, discuss with each other and arrive at uh, agreed uh, perspectives on uh, various matters. If you look at the uh, final declarations of both, you will see common areas of deliberation uh, between the two summits and then key in the deliberations were the matters of our perspectives as developing countries on the responses uh, to climate change, the responses of the wealthy nations to their responsibilities in supporting developing countries uh, to address the climate change uh, impact, uh, issues of the war uh, uh, against uh, in Gaza, which is really a war against the people of Palestine, uh, also came up from a great deal of discussion we also uh, concluded on reform uh, of the United Nations Security Council, on which there are very strong feelings among non NAM members, as well as the G77 and China. We really uh, pushed in the final uh, uh, declaration for conclusive action on this matter of UN uh, uh, reform. Then I turn to uh, the case before the ICJ regarding what we uh, believe is Israel's genocide in the war on Gaza. Uh, some of you would now know that at a special cabinet meeting that we held on the 8th of December last year, we decided as government that South Africa should institute legal proceedings at the International Court of Justice against Israel for, we believe, violating its obligations under the Geneva Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. You would all be aware of some of the facts surrounding this war in Gaza. Recent figures by Oxfam indicate that the average daily killing of Palestinians by the Israeli military since October 7th exceeds the daily death toll of any major conflict in recent years. That the deaths of children are almost incomparable, both in terms of actual numbers killed and the rate at which children uh, have been killed. More journalists, you would know better than we do, have been killed in Gaza in the last 100 days than were killed during the Second World War and the Vietnam War. So having looked at a range of information and data before us, Cabinet was persuaded by the sheer immorality and illegality of the actions of the Israeli government that we had to act. There was consensus in that meeting that South Africa should approach the highest judicial organ of the United Nations to seek an end to the mass killing of Palestinians and to stop the wholesale destruction of civilian infrastructure, including residential buildings, hospitals, schools, bakeries, water and electricity facilities. From the outset, our concerns have been centered on the values and principles of our constitution, a constitution which places a premium on the right to life, the right to human dignity, and which sets out the human rights which should be enjoyed by all persons. So following the cabinet decision, we then had to work very hard to ensure that we were able to institute and submit our application. 
We didn't have Christmas, did we? No. On December 29th, South Africa filed its application to institute proceedings against Israel, as well as our request for the court to determine a set of provisional measures. You're all aware the matter was heard in The Hague on the 11th and 12th of January this year, particularly at that time in relation to the request for provisional measures. The substantive matter of whether genocide has been committed will be addressed in the merits aspect of the case. On January 26, the court delivered its order on South Africa's request for provisional measures. Whilst not all the provisional measures that were requested by South Africa were granted, crucial measures that will contribute to the protection of Palestinians were granted. The court was near unanimous in its decisions, in its order for provisional measures. These included one, that Israel shall take all measures within its power to prevent all acts of genocide as contained in Article 2 of the Genocide Convention, including, and I quote, the killing of members of a group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, and then imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. Second, Israel must prevent and punish direct and public incitement to commit genocide. And I must say with this particular point, the court went into some detail with evidence of statements of incitement that have emanated from leading government officials within the administration uh, of uh, Israel. Third, that Israel is required to take effective measures to provide urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance. Fourth, that it must ensure effective measures are taken to prevent the destruction of evidence and ensure its preservation. And fifthly, that Israel is required to provide a report to the court on the measures it has taken to give effect to these provisional measures within one month. While South Africa had called for the suspension of Israeli military operations in Gaza, the court did not grant this provisional measure. The decision overall by the court marks, we believe, a decisive victory for international law and a significant milestone in the search for justice for the people of Palestine. It also affirms the importance of global governance institutions, including organs of the United Nations. It remains vital for us as member states to ensure that we respect and implement the decisions of the court. And I suppose what confronts us now is what do we do if there is no implementation? And that is the question all nations must answer today because it is a body of the United Nations that has set out these provisional measures. It's not the South African government or South Africa on its own. It is the International Court of Justice. And if its orders are not respected, what does this mean for every other government that commits atrocities against a people? This is the big question that confronts us as the global community today. The finding, we think, also makes it clear that it is plausible that genocide is taking place against the Palestinian people in Gaza. You would have heard the court's uh, president actually saying this. Third states must therefore also act independently and immediately to prevent genocide by Israel and to ensure that they, as third states, 
are not themselves involved in violation of the Genocide Convention by aiding or assisting in the commission of genocide. This necessarily imposes an obligation on all states to seize funding and facilitating Israel's military actions, which as the court has indicated, are plausibly genocidal. As South Africa, we will continue to do everything within our own power to preserve the existence of the Palestinian people as a group. We will do what we can to seek the ending of all acts of apartheid and genocide against the Palestinian people and to walk with them toward the realization of their collective right to self-determination. Because as former President Nelson Mandela declared so stoutly, our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinian uh, people. And uh, we can't uh, ennoble President Mandela in some aspects and then neglect other aspects of his political uh, beliefs. The UN peace and security architecture, as we can see today, is clearly not able to give effect to the right to self-determination of the Palestinian people and has, of course, dismally failed to protect them from grave war crimes and the threat of genocide, which has necessitated concerned states to turn to the judicial institutions of the United Nations. If we fail through the judicial institutions, we must ask what protects us now. South Africa welcomes the support expressed by several countries and we encourage those states that are so inclined to approach the court to intervene in the proceedings in support of our case so as to send a strong message to the international community that the situation in the Gaza Strip is indefensible. Several countries spoke to me at the uh, summits uh, in Uganda indicating their intention uh, to take these steps. But I am still waiting for the uh, public action. But there are a number that have indicated a commitment to join us. Ce combat a bien montré les lacunes et les difficultés des, du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies. Okay, nous ne sommes pas parfaits. Ça a clairement montré les trous, les difficultés, tout bazar. Et il est temps de pouvoir ajuster ça. Vous vous rendez compte que depuis tout ce temps, il y a cinq pays qui dominent tous les pays du monde. C'est eux qui ont les seats at the United Nations Council. C'est-à-dire, c'est eux qui sont assis de manière permanente dans le Conseil de sécurité. Donc, dix pays peuvent dire non. Et s'ils disent oui, c'est oui. Dix pays peuvent dire oui. Si un pays parmi les cinq pays dit non, c'est non. Et ces pays sont les États-Unis, la France, Grande-Bretagne, la Chine et la Russie. Donc, ils sont censés être quoi, les plus puissants, les plus... Euh, dans un monde juste, ce n'est pas cohérent. Pas, ça ne se fait pas. Vous pouvez vivre dans une société où vous êtes musculairement plus fort, mais ça ne veut pas dire que vous avez plus de droits que tout le monde. Ça ne peut se faire que dans un monde injuste, n'est-ce pas Dans un monde correct, ce n'est pas, pas acceptable. Et elle demande un changement à cet égard. On the upcoming African Union Summit, all of you know I familiarly uh, uh, report on our country's foreign policy having at its core the advancement of the African agenda. We place great importance on our participation in African Union summits, and we will uh, be uh, very active in the next one, which will take place on the 17th and 18th of February in Addis Ababa. The summit will be held under the theme we adopted for 2024, which is educate an African fit for the 21st century, building resilient education systems for increased access to inclusive, lifelong, quality, and relevant learning in Africa. Last year, the African Union finalized the 10-year review of the first 10 years of Agenda 2063. A key recommendation 
in that uh, review report is that African Union member states have to accelerate implementation of the Agenda 2063, 17 key flagship projects which are aimed specifically at fast-tracking continental integration, in particular trade and market integration, uh, free movement of people, as well as infrastructure development. One of the flagship projects in which South Africa is playing a leading role is the operationalization of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, AFCFTA, which serves as a milestone development in the evolution of the African Union. We are particularly pleased that President Ramaphosa today officially witnessed the launch of South Africa's first shipment and preferential trading under the AFCFTA at the port of Durban. This is a historic occasion in the life of the free trade agreement. <coughs> President Ramaphosa is also expected to attend and participate in a number of high-level committee meetings of the Assembly of the African Union. These include the meeting of the Committee of African Heads of State and Government on Climate Change, which will be held to reaffirm Africa's position on climate change as advocated during the COP28 summit held in the UAE last year. In his capacity as chairperson of the Presidential Infrastructure Championing Initiative, President Ramaphosa annually holds a meeting of participating countries on the margins of the African Union Summit to provide a progress report on African infrastructure projects under the remit of Agenda 2063. The initiative aims to enhance infrastructure development in sectors such as transport, ICT, water and sanitation, and energy in our own country throughout the SADC region and the continent. And it is critical to the implementation of the Free Trade Area Agreement. Then, uh, yes, indeed, Ms. Mosamo, I can't uh, be dishonest. Um, I believe that the uh, rulings of the court have been ignored uh, by Israel. Hundreds of people have been killed in the last three, four days. Uh, and clearly, Israel believes it has license uh, to do as it wishes. So the world does have to reflect, because we're going to come to a point where we have to think, what do we do to stop such acts? Les Africains ne sont pas égaux. Il faut l'accepter. Je pense que le plus vite on l'accepte, le mieux on n'aura pas de difficultés. Euh, elle n'est pas complexée, pas de complexe d'infériorité. Elle n'a pas peur que quelqu'un veuille le crier dessus. Elle n'a pas peur que quelqu'un corrige son français ou que quelqu'un lui donne l'impression qu'elle n'est pas une docteur. Docteur dans les Pandore, bien assis dans ses bottes. Sans difficulté, sans raison. Elle s'appelle Nale Dipando, son nom africain. C'est bien, c'est encourageant. On veut voir plus de personnes comme ça. Elle dit ouvertement, il faut, il faut avoir honte. Ça, ça, ça nous dérange de voir que le Conseil de sécurité, les Nations Unies ont été incapables de trouver une résolution commune pour apporter la paix ou euh, euh, un solice, soulagement à ces peuples qui sont en train de souffrir. Mais très intelligemment, de manière très diplomatique, elle a pointé du doigt les horreurs qui se passent d'ici et là. Parce que bon, tendance, généralement, celui qui raconte l'histoire est celui qui a tendance à raconter son histoire. Celui qui raconte l'histoire ne dit pas du mal qu'il a fait. Les gens racontent seulement là, on leur a fait du mal. On ne dit jamais ce qu'ils ont fait pour provoquer ce mal. Nalé Dipondor, docteur euh, sud-africaine, très fort. Merci infiniment. Faites-moi savoir ce que vous en pensez. God bless. <rire>